So hello everybody, it is Monday, so it's time for another hardcore video. This time I'm going to show you two ways that you can feel down on group tables or feel down with a condition. So let's get started. Okay guys, so I'm going to show you two ways. You pick the one that you need depending on the case that you're working on, okay? So here's what we need. I have two columns, other stuff and text, and I want to, let me show you here, if you go to sort ascending, you can see that I want to fill down where other stuff is C, fill down, and then stop by D, and then F doesn't have anything, so you shouldn't fill down, G, and then H should fill up. That's what I want to do. And I showed you in a previous video that you could, you know, block the line and do some kind of weird stuff. I'm going to show you a cleaner way to do this now. This is what we're going to do. The first solution, we're going to grab group by, and then we're going to do other stuff. And here I'm going to put all rows. We will modify that later, okay? So as you can see here now, I have grouped the table into the different other stuff category. So what I'm going to do now is fill this text. And to do that, I'm going to go here to text field down, no table, sorry, table field down, and then I'm going to put for each line, I want to grab the column text, but I need to put it as a list, that's why the curly brackets, that's the way this function works basically. So now if we go in there and we go to C, you will see that it only, because I ask it to fill down, it will start from row one. I would say, okay, zero, fill down zero, and then find C, and then fills down. So in order for this to work, you need to sort the um, the columns of the C, and that ends up in the beginning. You could have an index or something like that, but it's too complex. So an easy way to fix that is to put table fill up, And then the table is the previous table, the table that gets generated with the fill down. And then I am going to put again the column text as a list because that's what the function requires. And close the parentheses so we don't get any error. Now, if we go in here, you see that everything filled down, right? So I can go and open. And we have the table. Now, there is another way I'm going to show you. I'm going to duplicate these and we're going to get rid of that and that. And this is what we're going to do. This is perhaps a little bit more straightforward. So what you can do is you can go to other stuff, group by, and then we're going to do um, the max. You know, the max works for text. It's not just for numbers, just so you know. So we're going to do the max, and then I am going to add a new one that is going to contain all rows. And this is basically going to generate the, you know, the other stuff by unique values, and then it's going to give me the max for each of these categories. So the max of these, the max of them. Mm -mm. And now watch this, if I go here and open, the text, it fills down, right? Because when it's expanding, it's expanding the value everywhere. So then you can just grab, delete this one. If you have all the columns, then you can expand the other columns and that will work beautifully. So both things work. Is there anyone that is more effective than the other one? I don't know. Probably there will be different use cases. That's why I'm using to you both. So hopefully this will show you how you feel down in Power Query when things are grouped or when you want to do it by conditions. So yeah, that's all. I will see you again on Wednesday. We're going to continue with our misleading chart series. Until then, as always, take care. Bye-bye.